Wonderful story, the old, old story, the never changing story of Jesus, a name above every name, exalted far above all principalities and powers, to reign forever and forever to make intercession for us. The great intercessor, the shepherd, the good shepherd, and Dear viewers and listeners, brothers and sisters, I welcome you now to this, our morning service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church here in Whithorn, Scotland. I rejoice with all my heart that this message this morning is going to go out to every nation, not only in the spirit, but it's going to be physically heard and bring encouragement, strength, salvation, healing to so many. And we love you, dear viewers and listeners, this morning. We love you. And much more important is to be in the presence of the Lord this morning, for He is love. The love that will never let you go. But always, for those who are believers who have given their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Underneath always will be the everlasting arms. Safe in the shadow of his wings. Let his wings enfold you this morning. As we come together. As we come together in this time of prayer and intercession. This time of praise and worship. This time of preaching of the word. Please join me now before the very throne of the Lord, of God himself, for this time of prayer and intercession. There is a river of life. It tells us in the very last book of Revelation, the very last book of the Bible, the very last chapter, there is a river of life flowing out on the throne of God. There's a river of intercession. We need to tap into that river in approaching the throne. Let's read that last part of the book of Revelation to start with our scripture for today. We at the end of Revelation, just as it does in Ezekiel, in the Old Testament, it talks about a river of life. And here it is, Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God gave them light, and they shall reign forever. And ever that is the inheritance. Those are the saints in light in the everlasting light of the Lord. Oh, Father God, we thank you today. God is light. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. There is no shadow of turning with thee. We long to be with thee. Where there is no darkness and yet on the earth too where we are now we can walk in the light of thy word thy everlasting glorious word of God we can walk knowing that that name shall be on our foreheads we can walk those of us who are believers knowing we're sealed with the Spirit of God. We are sealed and set apart for Him. We thank you so much for this, Father God. We thank you for the anointing today that breaks every yoke. Oh, we feel that anointing now, Father God. We thank you today that thou art a mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the wonderful Spirit of God, which shall guide us here and earth, shall guide us into all truth, which shall lighten the Scriptures for us and give us understanding. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray not only with those who are joining us on the program today or future days watching and listening. But for every believer, Lord, and those who are yet to know you as their personal Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Lord, light those scriptures today, Lord. They will understand the true word of God and the truth of thy word. Oh, hallelujah. I pray today in the name of Jesus, Father God, for the remnant church, for those who understand the scripture, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You understand the scripture that those whom the sun sets free are free indeed who are walking already in the light of thy word walking onwards to the perfect day Lord thank you for them we stand today with the persecuted church in every nation of every tribe we stand today alongside the persecuted church Knowing thou hast a martyr's crown waiting in heaven for those who pay the price by honoring thy precious name and preaching thy precious word, the price of their very lives. Because, Lord, thou, thy son Jesus Christ, is a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. He understands that the martyr, which means witness in Greek, the Greek word for witness, they have paid the price with their very lives. And also, Father God, we thank you this morning, uh, this morning for the, the blessings to flow on those who have given their lives and all their all that they have to live for thee today we thank you Father God today for those in this country who have been mocked and spat at and arrested and fined for preaching the gospel which is their God given right in this nation Father God protect and preserve thy remnant we pray today Strengthen us all in the inner man of the heart. And strengthen and encourage these dear, dear street preachers who have at long last, in these last week or two, been vindicated for actually daring to obey thy word and preach the gospel to every creature, the Great Commission. Give us today, all of us, that holy boldness that we need. Thank you that we have already all we need. But thou art the all-sufficient one. And thy precious son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago on the cross, gave us all we need. And he must have the preeminence in all things. So... Father God in Psalm 149 it tells that we praise the Lord this is a psalm of praise the second last one in the book of Psalms and it tells us Psalm 149 praise ye the Lord sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. It's such an anointing today, that's why I'm going with those dear viewers and listeners. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. 
to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor, this honor of all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. Yes, we have that honor this morning. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we have this honor to make war upon and establish thy victory already won in Christ Jesus upon all these enemy princes, principalities, and powers in Jesus' name. In particular today, in particular today, oh Lord, you see, there is none righteous, not one in their own righteousness. Not one. Not even, Lord, the nation of Ukraine, Lord. We pray for that people today, Lord, that nation. Not only because they're suffering in war, but because of the dreadful cull of the unborn, Lord. Lord, Let's come before you now in intercession for them because we have found that one baby, one unborn child in every two, 50% of unborn babies are killed in that nation. That is so wrong, Lord. Lord, there is no excuse for that, Lord, in thine eyes. Not even war or fear or anything else. Lord... Lord, it is thy desire in every nation in the world where this dreadful crime of, in, of abortion is happening to save the innocents, Lord. That is the honor that we have to come against and establish thy victory through Jesus Christ again. It is already established, but to remind the principalities and powers thou art life life and health and peace and there is no death in thee and no darkness in thee and we love you today Lord Jesus listen to this beautiful worship song Jesus the Savior of my soul, Jesus, Jesus, the name that calms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease, tis music in the sinner's ears, the name of Jesus is life and health and peace, Jesus, say that name, Jesus. Savior, Jesus. He's a Savior. A Savior. Wonderful privilege to be in the presence of the Lord right now, Jesus. Jesus. Just feel that presence and 
give him thanks today for all that he has done for us forevermore. Let's sing the song now. Give thanks with a grateful heart. sick let the sick say i am whole let the bound say i am free because of what the lord has done for us give thanks you know this coming week is probably one of the saddest weeks in 
British history. Mm. When we pronounce as Lord Protectorate, as God has called us to be, a week not of celebration, but of sackcloth and ashes mm. for a monarch and successive governments who have sent child after child from the womb mm. in far greater numbers than even Herod could have comprehended. It is a week of sackcloth and ashes for a monarch who has opened segregated parliaments in our nation, in Scotland and in Wales, thus beginning the breakup of the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. There is little to celebrate over this coming week, but every reason to bring forth days of repentance, bring forth days of prayer, making Downing Street rather than a Sodom and Gomorrah of debauchery into once more being mm. the house of prayer. Thank you, Lindsay. It is perhaps the saddest week coming up in Britain's history. There is little to celebrate In 1958, the monarch signed an act, I understand, to repeal the Witchcraft Act for forbidding witchcraft in our country. And ever since then, we've seen an abundance of the occult. Oh, it comes in its angel of light form through Tai Chi, through horoscopes, astrology, spiritualism, Contacting the apparent dead is now rife in our country. And instead of the Queen's promise to uphold the Christian gospel, those who do that on the streets are in danger of being arrested. It is the time for sackcloth and ashes. And the warnings in the word are clear. And throughout history, when a nation has turned away from God, there has already been consequences. Already over the last week, there has been a 4.3 earthquake in Los Angeles. And we are telling you today, you better take note. Over previous weeks, we have looked at passages in the Bible relating to the second coming, particularly Matthew 24. But I do not feel so led to go there this day. The Lord has continuously been showing me over the last days how consequences of disobeying God and breaking covenant with him. And I can hear the critics shouting, but that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. Isn't the Queen's coronation oath copied from the Old Testament, the coronation of Solomon and the Zadok priesthood? Did not Jesus say, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it? And if warnings are coming in the Old Testament on a people that had not yet fully been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, but had to rely on types of Christ, had to rely on the sacrifice of animals, how much more during this dispensation of the gospel of Christ Jesus, when after 2,000 years we celebrate his victory over principality and power, how much more today should we be interested in what Old Testament law has to tell us? Because Christ, yes,
has redeemed us from trying to fulfill this law practically by coming into our hearts that we may become the righteousness of the law, not through our ability, but through his. But for those who reject Christ, for those who take oaths, at his name in front of a 1953 congregation. There are serious consequences for nations and monarchs who disobey that which God has called them to do. And I tell you this now, in 1967, this present queen condemned herself to hell Without repentance, there's no sign of repentance, else the children would not be aborted today. For in 1967, this present monarch who I call to sackcloth and ashes, I speak spiritually, signed an act to destroy children lying in wombs of mothers, an act that brings ultimately the judgment of God. And it is this I am talking about today, that in a week, we are witnessing, Lindsay and I were in table, table, at Dumfries just a couple of days ago, and the bunting of Union Jacks was up. Living in Scotland, we see little of it. But the chains obviously send these flags out to all of their establishments, expecting there to be a great amount of business coming in on the back of what is known as the Jubilee. I was born in the very same month of the coronation service. And I feel a very special obligation to remind the nation that certain promises were kept which have not been kept. And in the coming week, we are doing a special Constitution Keepers program to look at the record of successive governments and of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II comparing her record to that of the first Elizabeth. Oh, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, that during this week, thy spirit should fall in heady conviction for sackcloth and ashes, I speak spiritually, of repentance of a nation on its knees rather than one in celebration, not giving a hoot <coughs> at the lost babies from the womb, not giving a hoot about the complete ignorance when it comes to the coronation service, that ignorance which we will be putting right through live streaming continuously through the Jubilee days. God on many occasions had to remind Israel of his covenant with that nation. And when we read through the coronation service, there is continuous reference to Israel and the Solomon coronation. Continuous reference to Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet who anointed Solomon king. And all the people rejoice. Quoting 1 Kings 1, 39, 40. And said, God save the king. Long live the king. May the king live forever. By thy hands anointed with holy oil. By thy breasts anointed with holy oil. Be thy head anointed with holy oil as kings, priests, and prophets were anointed. This queen was anointed with holy oil, as kings, priests, and prophets 
Oh, this is getting serious. Oh, take down the bunting. Cancel the street parties. Bring a day of repentance. And as Solomon was anointed king by Zadok the priest, this very special priesthood of God who affirmed the preeminence of God by placing him first, unlike the sons of Eli, who were content to minister to each other. We are living in a nation determined to celebrate an apparent jubilee when God is having nothing to do with it. And as Solomon was anointed king by Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet, so be thou anointed. And in the coronation service, special rites was given to clergy. The clergy, of course, being those following the line of Zadok and Nathan the prophet, to ensure that the promises in the oath were kept to not only by the monarch, but by successive governments. It has all been a complete failure. The only answer is the cross of Calvary. As Solomon was anointed king by Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet, so be thou anointed. Blessed, consecrated, queen over the peoples, all the peoples, whether they be in Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, or Wales, whom the Lord thy God have given thee to rule and govern in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We'll be coming more into this in our sackcloth and ashes jubilee program, which will be running live streaming continuously over the two jubilee days as an intercession against the principalities and powers who I come against now in the name above every name, that at this name every knee shall bow. And I release the angels of God over our nation. And Father, I pray thy spirit, instead of there being a celebration, should bring the conviction of God that none of these promises given by Her Majesty the Queen has been kept to, not one. said Duncan Campbell, oh, the church has been hopeless. It has tried its man-manipulated ways. Says Campbell, referring to the church in his day in the 50s, 60s, we tried this and that in an endeavor to create interest in the minds of men for the things of God. It's now being worked out in 20 years. There'll be no Church of Scotland, no Church of England whatsoever because the decline is so great. Why? Because they no longer preach the word of Almighty God. We have tried this and that, said Campbell in an endeavor to create interest in the minds of men for the things of God. But is it not true that we have come back from every endeavor with a sense of baffling and frustration? And we've said again and again, it cannot be done on human level. Hence this intercession is going out today in the name of Jesus, the name above every name. I've been watching video of the streets of Paris. 
And as is customary when there is a final where Liverpool Football Club are involved, the town is taken over and painted red. The enthusiasm is catching. For a football match. Yes, the biggest club football match in the world. The humour is terrific. The songs are amazing. And if Liverpool supporters can paint a whole capital city red, how much more should we be placing our country under the blood of the Lamb and going from city and city to city to town to village and taking over from the principalities and powers and declare the name of Jesus. There is more admiration now for Liverpool Football Club than there is in the church for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, this is serious, my friends. You need to get a hold of this reality. You have got more to learn from Coppites than you have from the dead churches which God warned about would have a form of godliness that denies the power of God. We have one here in Whitton, dead as a dodo. Thank God a young man with a Liverpool shirt walked along the street bringing some life. All the kirk here can do is give out hot cross buns at Easter. Well, I'm telling you this, even they have got the cross of Baal upon them. Cross of Calvary is one with the cross at the top. Where you see a cross in the middle, that's the cross of Baal. The Roman Catholic Church and all its customs. Wake up! Said Campbell, there's a cry everywhere today for God to do something. Well, I believe he's preparing a remnant so powerful and strong. It's persecuted constantly. <laughs> this ministry comes under inquiry after inquiry. It's cost us thousands in legal fees. And should the Lord be leading you to give powerfully ECCTV.org PayPal and stewardship buttons. Stewardship buttons there for those who can claim gift aid. Simple form to fill in. It only takes a couple of minutes. The remnant is rising. Oh, it's persecuted in the corner, just like John the Baptist was. When they were all celebrating, he was shouting, repent, repent, repent. Noah, when he was building his ark, when they were all celebrating in their sins and debauchery and their 10 Downing Street parties, they scoffed and laughed. Said Campbell, God is preparing a vessel. A vessel that might not yet be clean enough for him, but he's preparing it just the same. There's a conviction going on. He begins to handle us. Before she came here, Pamela was in a establishment church. She never heard such teaching. I'm telling you, it's imminent, the coming of the Lord, that God is restoring a remnant to give such teaching. As he begun, asked Campbell, the process of cleansing. Be ye clean, the bird of vessels of the Lord. God 
will not pour his Holy Spirit into that which is polluted by failure. God is cleansing a clean vessel. Are we clean? Oh, yes, I say again, he said. There is a hunger. We're encouraged to believe that revival is near. Like John Wesley, A.W. Tozer, expose what Tozer called mental tyranny, what Wesley referred to as mental ascent. Tozer said the human mind can endure textualism just so long before it seeks a way of escape. I believe that way of escape is here now. For too long, ministers have preached textual criticism rather than the true word of God. It goes on here in Witton, goes on in your parish church, goes on in your Elam church, goes on in your Methodist church. The state has taken over ministry training. That is why these churches are dying. J.D. Drysdale declared, but God is still on the throne. You see, we're the victors. And he quotes one of the Psalms, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. One of the great errors in spiritual warfare training is in the area that people are afraid of the devil. But the psalmist did not put it that way. The psalmist declared, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. You see, all the enemy can do is portray fear and he's been doing this the last two and a half years over a phony pandemic which if we had stood together as a nation we would have defeated long ago in the name of Jesus. Even now, people are afraid to go out. Even now, People are afraid, so they wear a mask. It's time to rise up, church. God's not given us the spirit of fear. Oh, it was promoted by the sage committee of, as Mike Graham on talk radio used to call them, the Brothers Grimm. Valance and Twitty, Witty, Twitty, Witty. How they used to come on television screens, promoters of fear rather than the fear of God. Now, now the time has come to have a prime minister on his knees before God, to have a monarch on her or his knees before God in sackcloth and ashes and repentance. We live in a day, declared Drysdale. He was speaking in the 1950s, so how much more today should we read this? When hearts are full of fear, what is more natural, he says, to human hearts than fear? Yet the Bible is full of fear knots. How many people do you know who are in stress? How many people do you know who worry? Yet what does the Bible say? Fear not. 
You see, it's not the enemy who can get us. That's not what the psalmist was saying. What can get us is the fear of the enemy. Trouble is, many of us, like Bunyan's pilgrim, have lost our role. In other words, we have neglected the word of God so have lost the comfort and sustaining power of the promises of God and we have become timorous and mistrustful. One lady, she's likely to be watching this live stream at this time. She's from the south of England. She was like the woman with the issue of blood. She had been to many physicians, we read in the Bible, as she had been to many deliverance ministers. And I asked her, how much does it cost you? And she laughed, knowing it's likely it's cost her thousands. We never come to seek deliverance. We always come to seek the deliverer and his word. And I said to her, I have a Bible course I can give you for free. You can have it too if you email me, ECCTV4219 gmail.com it will teach you the word of God it's only the word that can make us clean not the words of the deliverance minister and he can even say the name of Jesus but they say it with mental assent rather than from the heart just as the sons of Sceva and the situations get worse and worse we've seen it in the charismatic world time after time and time again and we have had them come here who are used to this kind of world of constant ministry and as they do the Bible course we give them part one never to see it to be marked they go somewhere else so that their feelings can be placated. But I tell you, it's come a time of judgment. And only those who have sought the Lord, who have walked in his statutes and kept his commandments, shall live under the promise of God for what we read in Leviticus, how much more today should it be applied when Jesus has been to the cross for us. If we walk in his statutes and keep his commandments and do them, the promise of God, then I will give you rain in due season. The land shall yield her increase. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. How many of you are noticing in Great Britain amazing shortages? But Matthew 24 not only promises pestilences, I look at monkeypox and look at its origins from the present day cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm telling you, I speak as Christ and the church, but the vote to bring about so called gay marriage has brought about such a massive curse on this country because the word God, God declares a man shall leave his parents to be joined to one wife. I speak as Christ and the church and by voting to bring 
strange flesh together is a vote to call Christ and his church a church of strange flesh. You're under a curse. If ye will not hearken unto me, will not do all these commandments, if ye shall despise my statutes, if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, not one of the covenant promises of this present monarch has been kept to at all. One is to uphold the Christian faith and the Christian gospel. It is in decline like never before. It has been allowed to be taken over by the New World Order and their phony Bibles and the Queen which the the Bible which the Queen swore on has been disregarded and a Roman Catholic counterfeit from the codices of Vaticanus, Sinaticus, Alexandrinus, from the bondages of Egypt have taken over from the promise given by Almighty God, given to Almighty God by Her Majesty the Queen who received the King James Bible, King James VI of Scotland, first of England, received the King James Bible declaring it to be the lively oracles of God and the church which he's overseeing has rejected it for the codices of Rome. I will appoint over you terror, consumption, the burning ague. She'll correct my pronunciation. A that shall consume the eyes. I tell you, Putin is declaring in 200 seconds he can destroy this country. So what is in the word of God is now at the hand of the button of an individual. Are you repenting today? A man called John Dent from Haragus in Yorkshire phoned me. He said, had you seen this? I said, what is it? And he has been telling me he is sensing a mighty judgment coming on this nation. And he says, I've got the scripture. God is jealous. And the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth. The prophet Nahum repeats it. Away with your teaching of God is all love but no justice. Away with your phony teaching that a God will accept you as you are and sinners saved by grace. Yes, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But then it gives a condition. But whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. But what about those who do not? And these are the consequences. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He reserveth wrath for his enemies. He is slow to anger, great in power, will not at all acquit the wicked. Doesn't the Bible say, I am the Lord, I change not? Isn't he yesterday, today, forever the same? How is it now in churches he's changed his mind? I will not acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and the storm. And if you sow rebellion, you will reap the whirlwind. And that is upon this nation this week.
wrote Nell Hawkins of 80 Ronald Street, Liverpool 13. With this I close. There's something wrong with the church today. No passion for souls. No longer to pray. My Lord is the same, for he changeth not. Then what is the cause of this soul-killing rot? Why is the Christian losing his fire? Why isn't the standard of holiness higher? Simply because God's word is neglected and the blood of my Savior becoming rejected. What is the reason we don't see revival? What is preventing its blessed arrival? There's only one answer. God's word is neglected. The blood of my Savior becoming rejected. How can we expect to see miracles wrought? How can we hope to see sinners blood bought if the word of God is so sadly neglected? The blood of my Savior becoming rejected. When shall we see a Holy Ghost move? When will the church arise from the groove? Not till the saints love to feast on the word and the blood of my Savior is loved and revered. You see, this summary from now, given many years ago, is why our nation is at its end as we know it. Because God's word in the coronation service is not even taught to schools, social workers, medical staff. Nothing is said. It is neglected. The queen promising before God behalf of the nation, she would uphold the word of God, the Christian gospel. Where is the blessing continues now? We're longing to see. Where is the power for you and for me? Tis here where the saints love to feast on the word. The blood of my Savior is loved and revered. Arise then, believer, have you not heard? Your most powerful weapons are the blood and the word. Then treasure and use these gifts of God's love and Holy Ghost blessing will fall from above. Oh, are you coming, sinner, today? Are you to become part of this remnant church? The one which declares the cleansing blood of the Lamb. Oh, come, sinner, today. Those of you who have been in churches denying the power, having a form of godliness more near to self-righteousness than of the cleansing blood of the Lamb, are you leaving that place of iniquity today? Are you coming to the cross of Calvary? Lindsay, come and sing, and Pamela too. This wonderful Fanny J. Crosby hymn, and then the song of the Covenanters, when Scotland was on fire, we want it again, Lord, but you can only bring it through a cleansed vessel. Mm. Amen. Bless you, David. Thank you. And that lovely poem, just for an ordinary lady from Liverpool. What a beautiful poem, isn't it? And here you are. 
So, we're now going to sing a wonderful song, a hymn, which is so appropriate for these last days, the very evil days we're living in. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. Oh, Lord. And isn't this a dry, thirsty land? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Yes, Fanny J. Crosby, who wrote hundreds of hymns. And this is such a wonderful one. It's also looking forward to the second coming of the rapture. Oh, 
well, by the way. There was a shot in the great God, not much shade, I'd rather mourn. Oh, Lord, I venture the living sun, the love of the word of God. Once more, Lord, once more, Lord, as in the days of God God 
God has achieved His ways, nor stick nor rock could hold Him back. When Scotland was on fire, once more, Lord, once more, Lord, as in the days of yore, o'er this dear land, Thy Spirit moved. Said Scotland, now on fire. Said Scotland, now on fire. On with that wonderful, wonderful, exciting song. <laughs> we say goodbye to you now and God bless you. And this edition of the Pentecostal Holiness Church. Are you doing it again, David? Wow.
Yeah.